Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Dump Dog and I are gonna take a perfectly good 1964 Chevrolet farm truck that we bought at an auction and turn it into this jalopy. Side note, if you don't like lowered pickups, leave a comment down below because uh, your negativity just boosts my ego and the algorithm. All right, let's show them what we did to make this thing awesome. Let's go inside and back in time where it's a whole heck of a lot warmer. What do you say? Yep, let's go. Somebody's got the zoomies. We maybe got stuck in that little snowbank there. It ain't so bad. My original plan was to take this thing, load up Duff, go for a ride on the country block here. So, you know, four-ish miles. But just backing it off the trailer, and it's a slight incline going up. The clutch slips so bad and then driving, turn around the yard. The clutch is absolutely smoked. It runs terrible. So we're going to have to get some parts coming. We're going to have to put it up on the hoist, see if there's a bunch of mouse nest in the clutch. We got to do something with the carb. We got to drain the gas. It stinks something terrible. The brakes are pretty subpar, so we should probably See if there's any fluid in there and then see what's leaking or if we got brakes that need to be adjusted or what the deal is. So no rider on the block. We'll maybe uh, take a little bit closer look at this thing and uh, yeah, probably get some parts coming. So this thing, I'm almost positive he's the original owner because it sounded like this guy never got rid of nothing. I don't believe the camper, topper, whatever you want to call it, was on its whole life. You can see... That valance has got a hooey in her, and that grill has got a little right there. This control arm on this side, when we hook the chain up, we notice it's peeled underneath. But otherwise, there's a little bit of whiskey damage going on over here in this fender. But that's, that's to be expected. Typical rust in the dog leg on the front fender. We grab the cab corners down there. They're not super solid, but they're pretty dang good. They're all there at least. A little bit of rust in the rocker panel, not bad at all. And then a little bit down here in the cab corner. These are factory cab corners. Oh, there's a small dent there. The aftermarket cab corners just kind of dip down. They don't have that lip at the bottom to match up with the rocker panel. Well, you want to check it out? Go for it. Driver's seat's got a little tear over there. There's a huge mouse nest in there, so we're not going to open that up. Right meow. Solid above the windshield. There's no visor on the passenger side, no mirror on the passenger side, so she's pretty stripped out. Six lug, 15 inch wheels. We didn't find the hubcaps, thought they would be around there somewhere. Tailgate is pretty good for what it is. There's a couple of dings up there, and there's a little filler down here, so somebody did some body work at one point to it. Like I showed you at the auction, there was a couple holes in the floor. Looks like the topper. I don't know if that's factory that's been patched. There's one up there. Oh yeah, she's been patched because that same spot's cracked on that side. I don't know if we're keeping the topper or not. Why can't they make shocks like this with springs in them anymore instead of them gas struts? It's got this typical aftermarket rear bumper that what they're so good for is pushing in the box sides. There's a small dent over here. We might be able to bring that out. Otherwise, there's just a couple of door dings in here. This cab corner is not as nice, but it's there. This rocker is better though. And this dog leg in the fender is better, but still needs fixing. No, we're not going for a ride. The clutch is smoked. Looks like it's got 75,919 miles. So I'm guessing that's original. There's highly unlikely this thing's got 175,000 miles, but small things like the fuel cap, the paint's worn off. That's been opened a few times. Ah, oh, looks like the cab kissed the box once or twice. Flexing over all those rock piles. It's got the CB radio. It's the Thomas J by President, or it's the Thomas J President. I don't know. Like I said, it's got that Ford radio in it. No attack. That clutch pedal, she's pretty smooth, but I don't think that's 175,000 miles smooth. Oh, perfect. They scotch locked the CB radio in. That seat has been recovered. It should look like that, but it's in pretty good shape. I think it'll take another cover quite well. 
Floors are super good in it. That's the beauty of these pickups. Seat cover, maybe recover the visor, and then throw a new floor mat in, you're good to go. There's no dash pads, there's no door panels, there's no headliner. Yeah, if you wanna get crazy, you can put carpet in it. Let's check out the six. In 64, you could get a 230, a 250, or a 292. I'm pretty sure. Ugh. Duff, you wanna get a hood for me? That'd be great. So like I was saying, you could get a 230, a 250, or 292. I believe that this is a real grease ball. I'm thinking it's a 250. I don't know how you tell the difference. It doesn't really matter. I think a lot of the parts interchange. We should probably clean her up real good. Maybe, uh, oh yeah, it looks like she might have a little blow by. I guess we didn't check the oil or the coolant or anything. Oh yeah, she's full on coolant. It's got a green top, interstate, so pretty fresh, and then it was stamped by the dealer, three of 21, so about a year and a half old on that. Could probably use some new heater hoses and radiator hoses and a fan belt, but at least there's no flexi hoses. Still got the OG oil bath air cleaner. Let's see what the master cylinder tells us. Well, she's full, so that's not good. Maybe there's just a bunch of air in the system. I'll have to play around with it, check it out. That carb isn't all grimy. It's like somebody's been in there. But it's definitely needs some tuning. It's got an alternator, no generator. Uh, it does have the external regulator. It looks like a little tiny radiator in there. The V8s have much larger radiators that bolt up here. Belt's a little loose. But everything's all here and it's pretty much unmolested. Like. It needs a different hose for this. Get rid of that clamp. Uh, it's got a different ground cable, but it's actually a nice one and it's super heavy. It's got a different battery cable end. Could probably replace that. But other than just a clutch, some brakes, tires, and a good cleaning, maybe an altitude adjustment. I suppose we could try to work out that dent back there. Oh, there's a dent in the door where it overextended here. And it looks like there's a little Bondo in there, so that probably happened once before and was fixed. So parts of this pickup have been repainted. I think you can see where it's chalkier white here and it's more green at the front of the door. Same with the hood. This side's darker green. This side's got a lighter green, like some of it might have been repainted. And then of course that's an add-on antenna. Seems how it, this pickup probably did not come with a radio. I didn't get the title because I wrote a check. I didn't know that this was a cash sale, so they're gonna wait for my check to clear before they send me the title, but we'll take a look at that and see if indeed Arden was the original owner of this 1964 C10. I should look to see what color this green is too. But look at how much time he spent in this thing, leaning out the his arm out the window, rub the paint off. That's supposed to have been where he grabbed the door. When he's opening her up and grabbed her there, went over like that. Oh yeah. That's where all the paint's rubbed off. That's just cool looking at stuff like that. Maybe she's got 175,000, I don't know. If it did, it was pretty well taken care of. We'll probably know once we get around the hoist and look at some of the bushings and stuff underneath. I'm excited for this thing. I, I felt like I overpaid, but after getting it home and after seeing how everything else went at the sale, I think I, I, think I did all right on this. This was the first vehicle to sell, so it seems like that kind of sets the pace for the day, so. Maybe I made everybody else pay too much. Who knows? All right, let's get this thing cleaned up and go from there, get some parts ordered. All right, we got the uh, green 64 Chevy back in here. I got a bunch of parts for this thing. So first thing we're gonna do, since the clutch is absolutely garbage, we're gonna pull the engine out and put a clutch in it. I know we could pull the transmission to a clutch, but I think that engine's so greasy and grimy and we got new radiator hoses, new plugs, wires, and it's obviously leaking from somewhere. So I got a new gasket set and we're gonna do a tune up and we're gonna go through the carb and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that apart. Get old Mojo over here to help pull the hood off and it should go uh, pretty easy. These things are pretty simple. You 
uh, don't suppose it was having any heating issues, do you? It's like 60% of the radiator, plugged right up. Wow. We'll get Mojo to work his magic with the pressure washer. He's no pudding, but we'll take what we can get. Based on the cleanliness of the carburetor, it looks like somebody's had a kit in there recently. So I don't know if something plugged up or they did it wrong. We'll see. Also, you can tell somebody's been in there because that is the wrong type of bolt cross-threaded or not cross-threaded onto that linkage. So we'll have to address that as well. Looks like it's got a pretty new fuel pump on her too. So you can tell somebody's been in there recently because that gasket's like new. This might have been why it was idling so high. Is there's some type of homemade gasket still in there and she's pretty brittle plus doubling up gaskets usually creates the leaks so maybe that was her issue the whole time also that fuel is absolutely putrid i noticed something's going on with the clutch linkage down here like they made a bracket i don't know so maybe this is a newer edge and somebody swapped in but the clutch linkage has definitely been uh, refabricated All right, we got everything done up top. Now we crawled underneath and checked this clutch out earlier. So this is the first time we've had it on the hoist. So let's take a look at this thing. I just thought it was really cool on these old farm pickups, how just driving through the grass and the corn stalks and stuff just wore these bumpers smooth and even the bottom sides of these pickups. What's not cool is when you hit a rock and you talk all the front of your lower control arm over. It should look like that side, at least the uh, Cross members and all whammied up. That doesn't really affect anything though. I suppose we could halfway straighten it out or put a different one on. Looks like they knocked a grease zerk off of that lower control arm pivot point. Well, when we got it home, we pulled the inspection cover off and there's a lot of mouse house and yeah, just a, a bad clutch in there. So that's why we're doing this. Quite a bit of grease. You can see the cab support's real good. Look at all the mud packed in that front fender from the last time he drove it or whatever. Obviously there wasn't a car wash in the tiny town of Heimdall, North Dakota. But yeah, this side's even more packed. Front cab supports are awesome. The rears, you can see the dirt went in there and supposed to run out there. Anyway, she's pretty full. A little bit soft on the back side, on the driver's side. Passenger side, she's, it's there, but it's, it's soft. You could put a, one of those sleeves over it again more mud packed on it i don't want to scrape that off because then mojo will have to clean it up in the morning he gets mad at me we're going to replace this rubber fuel line too while we're at it the carrier bearing looks good u joints all look pretty good single exhaust obviously six cylinder looks like somebody's done a little tail light wiring repair at one point that same rock that got the lower control arm also got our trailing arm nascar truck suspension truck arm suspension nothing but the finest on these 60 to 66s looks like he did put some new shocks on the rear at one point pinion seal maybe he's weeping a little bit yeah you can see the rust just barely bleeding out there and you'd see it moving these rear ones are always the first one to go out so i think that's a i don't even know what part number it is I was gonna say 369 but that don't seem right glass pack oh yeah oh she's she's softish you can see the mud stuck in the rear bumper back there oh yeah what color wire you got red i ah, will just use all red for everything and i think the exhaust was come out the side here but when somebody put the glass back on it i think they just got lazy and i'd say straight out the back but it ain't even straight spare tire should be here She's got a 12 bolt in her. You can tell because two bolts at the bottom. If it was one bolt, it'd be a 10 bolt, but I think these are all 
12s. I don't know what this hitch is all about. I suppose that's what they pulled it out of the building with. But yeah, the bed floor, all that grease really kept her sealed up. This is the only board that's really busted in there, and that's where they got the plywood. Again, more uh, fancy taillight wiring going on back here. The good news is you can get uh, wire harnesses for these pickups like super cheap, or you used to be able to. I haven't looked in a while. So, All right, I'm going to finish taking the starter off, and we're going to take out a couple more bell housing bolts, and that engine is ready to yank. I think we got everything unhooked. These six cylinders are a real treat to hook a chain to. I think we got a manifold bolt and a random bolt hole on the other side. Hopefully that kind of levels it out, but they always want to pull crooked. But yeah, uh, I want to say I got everything, but looking now, I forgot to do the exhaust. So scratch that. I'm going to put the jack back down, lift it back up in the air, and pull the exhaust bolts out. Idiot! I was going to say this is the first time I've ever pulled an engine and remember everything, but sure enough, I didn't. Take two on engine removal. Good news is the exhaust studs had brass nuts on them, 3 ace ones, the nice deep ones, and the exhaust, they came right off, didn't have to use any heat, didn't break any studs. Love when you find those. If you're putting exhaust studs in, or you're working on exhaust, always use brass nuts, because they don't get rusty, and they come apart when you need them to. Tech tip of the day. All right, let's get this thing pulled out of there. There's a huge dent on the top of the valve cover. I don't know where that came from, but third floor going up. We're off the engine mounts. We gotta need to come off the uh, transmission. Bell housing, there we go. We're out of the dowels. Oh, we gotta get the uh, input shaft to come on the clutch. What is, oh, there's a bolt in the inspection cover. Of course, we didn't get them all. Yeah, what are the odds we can get on that? Not very good. Of course, we bent up the inspection cover in the process. What is going on there? Well, we got her out of there. Uh, this inspection cover down here was held on by the starter, and apparently there's one bolt over there, so uh, we just kind of pushed it out of the way. So we're going to have to straighten that out. Put it on the old English stump. Looks like it had a small exhaust leak, so should probably put a new donut in there. And we got some pressure washing to do. She's uh, pretty dirty under here. So, yeah. Even the battery box is not all rotted out like they usually are. Apparently the ground is no longer hooked up. All right, let's take a look at this engine. The clutch might have been okay if you uh, took it apart. Oh, well, there you go. It's a rebuilt, independent rebuilders. You got all the mouse house out here, but since we're this far, a clutch is a hundred bucks, 150, something like that, we're putting it in. So here's kind of the giveaway that somebody's been in here before. This is where the Z-bar mounts for the clutch, and that does not look original. You know, the angle iron and the square bolt's kind of the uh, dead giveaway. But it must have been working, so we should decode what the heck this engine is. Hopefully our clutch and everything else we bought works for us. And then also, the oil pan is blue, so it makes me think that this is maybe a car engine, and they swapped the uh, pickup oil pan onto it, and then the intake manifold is blue as well. And then also my favorite, you know, not, it ain't the red silicone, but it's, it's the blue silicone. So we get this thing all cleaned up, put some new gaskets, seals, all that good stuff in there. That is a really strange oil pan. Almost looks like it's got two sumps. I did see that it does have a block heater in it. This was about the first vehicle we've ever seen that didn't have a cord out front, but somebody cut her off. So we'll replace that. Exhaust gaskets, all that good stuff. And uh, while we're opening up and doing a rear main seal, we should check and see, you know, what this bottom end looks like. All right, let's uh, put her on the stand so we can get her cleaned up. You know how I was wondering about the uh, clutch linkage and oil pan discolorations? So this engine should have been blue. It sounds like in 67, they went to orange or red or whatever you want to call it. But uh, so we did a little digging. 
Let's uh, let's get to the good news first. We got the flywheel and the clutch off. Uh, flywheel looks pretty good. We're gonna take it in and get it resurfaced. And then I was like, wow, let's, we gotta figure out what this engine is. So we uh, checked out this code T0415OR. T is Tonawanda, New York engine facility. O4 is April 15th. Isn't that tax day? And then uh, zero R comes up as 64 to 67, 194. So it's a little baby engine, not even a 230 or a 250. And uh, in front of a power glide, which explains the clutch linkage on the other side, this was a power glide engine. Maybe they just used a different linkage on the, uh, sounds like these only came in Novas and Chevelles. So yeah, sure enough, Casting number 3833057 comes up as like a 65 to 67, 194. And the casting date code C46, March 4th, 66. So we got ourselves a freaking 194. It would have been great if it would have been a 292. A 230 I was just fine with, but a freaking 194. So I don't know if any of our gaskets are even going to fit this thing. It's probably not worth the effort of cleaning it up, but we got it and it seems like it runs okay. Didn't take long to pull out. Uh, the reason I don't want to change this to like a small block or an LS is because the amount of work required. The radiator is already hooked up. The throttle linkage is hooked up. The exhaust is done. The wiring's all there. So, I mean, ideally we would have like a 230 or 250 sitting here or 292 ready to drop in, but we don't. The only uh, 230 we got is in that 65 out back, and that's got a hole in the piston. I would rather stick a good piston in that, but... Uh, we don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. We gotta keep this stuff going or we're gonna lose the shop. So the beauty of these things is uh, you can bolt a small block right up to that bell housing because it's the same bell housing. So if, if we were to want to change it out or somebody would, you get all kinds of options. You can bolt a big block, small block, LS, whatever you want, right up to that transmission. But then it snowballs and you're doing exhaust, you're doing radio hoses, then you're doing uh, throttle linkage, you're changing the wiring. Then you get more horsepower. It's like, oh, should we upgrade the brakes, power, disc, all that good stuff, dual reservoir. And then, you know, like, oh, you're doing that? Well, let's get rid of that clunky SM420. Let's put an overdrive in it. You know, you have five speed, six speed, 700R4, 4L60, or just a plain Jane power glide or a turbo 350, whatever. So this is what we got. We're going to clean it up. The old 194. I've never had one of these. So yay. I'm so excited, but whatever. Say I had one. Hopefully a lot of the parts interchange between the 230 because I got a whole freaking gasket kit sitting here. It'll probably say on here what it fits. If it fits 230s or 250s. Most gaskets has to do with, this is engine tech. So it's, oh, sure enough, applications, cars and trucks. 194, 230, 250, 292. That's only for trucks because cars never came with a 292. All right, so good news is our gaskets should work. Bad news is it's 194. So when we're ordering parts, we should be ordering parts for a 66 Nova with a uh, 194 in it for like rear main seal and spark plugs, ignition. Hopefully that stuff's all the same. GM was pretty good about that stuff. Like you said, the gasket's the same, so. All right, uh, I'm gonna put this on the engine stand so we can wash it all up and uh, drown my disappointments in sandwiches. I should have known. I should have looked this thing over better when I bought it. Not like this clutch linkage thing was going to stop me from buying it. But that was the giveaway. That uh, this, We should have looked into it more. Cleaned up the casting numbers. Oh, well. Live and learn. Right, Duff? Where are you hiding at? Taking a nap somewhere around here? All right, we didn't show you because we're not that oaky from Muskokie that uh, likes showing pressure washing, but... We got it cleaned up pretty good. There's a couple spots you might hit a little bit better, hard to get at. Didn't really notice when we were wet, but I, I'm torn on if we paint the frame or not, because it seems like when you paint it, it just never turns out as good as you want. And then where do you quit? Then it's like, ah, then you do the inner fenders and the heater box and oh man, do you do the firewall and then do you fill holes? And I don't know. Look at all that blue paint on the bell housing though. You can definitely tell it should have been blue. We'll have to take that inspection cover off and clean that up a bit. But yeah, it's better than it was, easier to work on. 
He said, I don't know if I'm going to paint it or not. If I do, I think I'm just going to do the frame. I'm not going to get into the inner fenders because then it just, it just snowballs. But we might just not do anything. We will see. Got the radiator cleaned out. This thing had the most plugged up radiator I've probably ever seen. And something that ran and drove. You know, short of some farm equipment implement. So yeah, that cleaned up pretty good. I can maybe hit her a little bit more. But it's definitely a smaller radiator in a six cylinder than a V8. Imagine that. And then, I didn't show you what the engine cleaned up, but we got that all pressure washed down, stripped off the engine mounts, intake manifold, exhaust manifold, fuel pump, distributor, brackets, all that good stuff. I already took the water pump off, put a new gasket in there because that was all siliconed up nasty. We still got to scrape the uh, thermostat housing gasket. So we're going to paint her all up and put her back together. We already got the rear main seal in. Uh, we knocked the dent out of the valve cover. Got that looking way more gooder. Uh, we still got to put the oil pan on it. I think we're going to paint the uh, engine mounts black. And I don't know if we're going to paint that bracketry black or not. But she's going to look... Gonna look good. We'll clean up that distributor and the fuel pump and thermostat housing, all that stuff. Heck, we might even clean up his nice uh, shifter bracket. Maybe even get rid of that square bolt. You know, those those aren't the worst welds I've ever seen. She ain't too shabby. The bearings didn't look super amazing. The cam doesn't look super amazing in this thing, but we're not gonna stick any money in this 194. We're just gonna let her eat, see how she works, and uh, go from there. Well, maybe you can put a new uh, oil filter on there. I'm guessing that's probably the same as a small block Chevy. We're going to put a front seal in it, too. We don't, I don't like leaks. We don't have stuff that leaks, and we're not going to let this leak. Oh, yeah, and then the flywheel. I took that up to uh, the local diesel shop. Had them resurface that son of a biscuit, so she's nice and good. So once that's off the stand, we can bolt that on and put a new clutch on, and she be ready to go. I should check to make sure our clutch is the same because that would be my luck. Got the wrong clutch because it's the wrong engine. But I'm guessing this is the flywheel off of a 230 or 250 because that 194 was destined for an automatic originally from the factory. So, yeah. Should probably pressure wash that starter, you know, because starters, they really like getting wet. Any electrical component in general. All right, that's a quick update we got going on that. It's kind of on the back burner. We're trying to sneak these uh, transformation videos in between will it runs and whatever. Because it seems like with these, you're always waiting on parts, you know, waiting for somebody to machine the flywheel, or you're waiting on paint from Amazon, or you're waiting on tires from the tire shop, or you're waiting for the wheels to get sandblasted, or yada, yada, yada. This is, they can't just bang one of these out in a week. I can't anyway. So this one's going to be work in progress. Like everything around here. So update on the 64 Chevy C10, the carburetor here, the uh, throttle shaft is tight, but that linkage there was pretty sloppy on the throttle shaft. So we peened her to get her to tighten up a little bit better. But then that hole right there, I think it's for the accelerator pump right there. She's uh, pretty slopped out. So we're gonna see if we can't weld that up and redrill it. And the other thing is, I'll see if I can zoom in here enough, but that, Linkage is worn pretty well too, so we gotta build that up. But the carburetor is all pretty much ready to go. That being said, Mojo brought out this old motor manual. Ugh, get her open here. The old 1969 motor manual. So uh, we got her all done up right. And the uh, we're trying to set the points on the distributor. I can't show that on here, but uh, the bushings are all slapped out in that. So we couldn't set the points. It's uh, easier to show with the uh, points plate on there, but anyway, we're gonna. You can get a reman distributor for like seventy bucks with a cap and rotor. So we're just gonna drop one of those in there. If you don't do that, you're you're never gonna get your dwell set correctly because the bushings are worn in the shafts. So you're never gonna get your points set properly. And uh, this whole ordeal probably would have been fine, but we want to tune it up right since we got it. If we got to. Uh, We'll get a different base and a different linkage if I can find a different carburetor to steal that off of. But like I said, this carburetor looked really good inside. Uh, we did find a couple of uh, components that were stuck in there. So that's probably why it was running quite poorly. So hopefully that doctors it up a bit. 
And then we'll show you the engine back here. We got her all resealed and painted up. And we were, it should be blue. Well, the pickup should have a blue engine. This engine should be orange. Uh, we didn't have any blue paint around, so we painted her orange. We got her all cleaned up, got her sensors cleaned up. We uh, sandblasted the manifolds, or the exhaust manifold, painted that black. I don't know, that paint's probably not gonna hold up. It's not really high temp paint, but it's what, uh, it's what we had. We got new frost plugs in it, all the good stuff. So the engines, yeah, new engine mounts. Oh, we put a new water pump gasket and a new thermostat gaskets. New oil filter, which is the same 51069 as a small black Chevy. Cleaned up the fuel pump. There was a bunch of uh, really ugly, nasty fittings on here for the PCV, so we're gonna try to clean that up a bit, aren't we, Duff? But yeah, this thing's uh, getting pretty close to going back together. We're gonna paint the pulleys, and we gotta paint a couple other odds and ends. Like I said, we just gotta get that distributor, and then we gotta uh, doctor up the old carbonator. We'll be good to go. And there's the wheels. We sent those off, got them blasted with the manifolds. They're back. We're gonna paint them white. Look at these sweet snow diggers and white spokes, gray spokes, I suppose. The extra traction 715s. Picked these up at a work auction. Got them dirt cheap. They make good rollers. They would actually make good tires, but I, I hate white spokes. I probably hate them more than Craigers. They're just tedious. They belong on trailers, and that's the only thing, but they're good enough for rollers. We can't show anybody this. We get made fun of. So, yeah, that's just a quick update on the uh, 64 that we got going on here. We're trying to sneak this in between all the umpteen million other projects we got going on here, right, Duff? All right, we're gonna get back to working on uh, probably a Cadillac. So there's your update on the 64. Finally getting back to the old 64 here. Did a little praying around with wheels and tires. I went with the tried and true 27560 Cooper Cobras, 25560. I don't know, what do you think, Duff? Rally wheels? I think it's gotta be a little bit, I mean, it's gonna get lowered, let's be honest. And uh, I feel like rallies are just, you're just kind of a poser if you got a six cylinder in rally wheels. So I don't know if we're gonna go that way. But check this out, Duff. We got some 235, 75 tried and true pickup size tires. I think, what are they? Venzias, classics, 787s, dime whites. Took the wheels to our local sandblast shop, Job Erection. These guys are great. Drop them off in the morning and by whatever, five o'clock that night, they got them ready to go. Super quick turnaround, super budget friendly prices. And then I got ourselves some white Rust-Oleum. Of course, we only painted the outside. We don't paint the inside because we're lazy like that. We're on a budget, right? But I think that's what we're going to go on with. I don't know if we're going to go with center caps yet or if we're just going to paint the hubs and put some new lug nuts on. I don't know. I think we're going to probably... I tried finding some hubcaps, but man, they are proud of them for these things. So who knows? Maybe we'll pony up and spurge for them. Take it out of your treat fund, huh? And then, while well, we had the engine out, we pressure washed her down real good. Got some poor 15 in a can. That stuff is insanely expensive. It always kind of has been, but now it's 40 freaking bucks for a, however many, 32 fluid ounce or whatever they are. Anyway, uh, took about a half can, so $20 with a poor 15. Looks pretty good in there. But here is the crowning jewel, the old 194. Mm. She's ready to go in. We even painted up that uh, cobbled together clutch mounting uh, bracketry whatnot. We got the carburetor all overhauled, cleaned her up in the ultrasonic cleaner. And then we uh, primed the oiling system using the old distributor. It's a good tech tip for you. If you got an extra distributor around, you just uh, gut the whole thing, take the gear off, and then you hook your drill up, prime your oil pump. So I get a little help in the morning. I think we're gonna slide that in, Mojo and I. Well, I got some help here and uh, Hopefully that thing's back on the road in no time so we can go for some RIDEs on Duff. We gotta get her a little bit lower and do some brakes and about 700 other things.
All right, I think we're ready to fire up the old 194 here. We got new radiator hoses, new heater hoses, new cooling overflow hose. We uh, aerosol overhauled the radiator and the fan and everything else. We got the original battery back in here. We got new battery cables. We cleaned up the wiring a bit. The thing is, we got seven quarts of oil in this thing and it's still barely on the stick. I don't know if you can see it here, but this has got a car oil pan. So it's got like a, a sump in the front. And oil just doesn't get up there. So uh, you can hear it hitting the bottom of the pan. So it's gonna be fine. We're gonna try starting it up. I'm guessing our timing isn't gonna be correct. We drained all the old gas out. We got six gallons of fresh new gas in it. So it's probably gonna need some hot sauce to get her rolling, but Look at that, I even aerosol overhauled the old coil there. She's good to go. Fortunately, the wiring on this thing was, was pretty good shape. Like I said, the battery cables were kind of used up and then we fixed up this jumper wire and this ground wire here. But yeah, she's all good to go. Even cleaned up the old oil bath and gave her a fresh coat of paint. What do you think about that, Dub? Uh-oh, scuffed our new paint, son of a gun. All right. Let's get the hot sauce, see what happens. Fill up our carb through the old vent tube here. Might take a bit before the fuel pump starts pulling fuel from the tank. Hopefully it primes itself. You gonna run the key or you want me to? I can run. Oh, you know how to do that? Yeah. All right. In case something else happens. Yeah. You'll be safely protected behind the firewall. Should I get the fire extinguisher? <laughs> I hope not. Okay. Make sure she's out of gear so don't run me over. All right. yeah, here we go. Slingshot. Oh, it must be pretty close. I started with the uh, Fresh brushes sounds good. That sounds like timing. Which way do we gotta go? Oh, you got her locked down! All right, try her. Okay. Hold it to the boards. Down? Yeah. Okay. It's almost like that starter Bendix wants to kick out too soon or something. Okay. Try choking it. There you go. Must be what it wanted. Choke on and try it. Try it. Or see, it'll start without the choke. Choke 
here again. It's got a miss, don't it? Lucky here, we got this thing running tip top shape. We forgot to put the air idle mixture screw in the carburetor. So yeah, that was the deal. And then we had to adjust up the clutch. Maybe the clutch was fine before, but it was full of mouse stuff. So those are really the only two hangups with the uh, install and everything here. Otherwise it came out pretty good. We found out you can put the thermostat housing neck on backwards, but that was a pretty easy resolution as well. We got new hoses, new clamps. Like I said, new ignition, new everything. Got the new master cylinder on. I even painted it so it doesn't get all rusty. Now we're gonna put her up in the air and we're gonna put wheel cylinders and brake shoes and hoses and all that good stuff. And Mojo's back there bead blasting some taillight buckets for some other project, so yeah. He's, he's making noise, sorry about that. All right, so what we got for brakes, look at this stuff. This is the jumping jack power stop auto specialty brake shoes. They're asbestos free because hasn't everything been since like 1974. Secondary post gear. Oh, it's, it's that's for the fast break-in. And they're precision cam ground, you know, for exact fitment. And then copper free, I don't get it. Is, is copper somehow bad now? I don't know. So we got new shoes all the way around, which is pretty rare for us. And then we got the hardware kits, front and rear with springs and yada, yada, yada. New wheel cylinders, new uh, hoses. And then we got lowering springs for the rear. I think these are five inch, because that's the only way to go, because that's the most you can go. And then we got a track bar, because when you lower these things, the track bar, you know, instead of sitting like this, it's now sitting like this, and so it moves the rear end one way or the other, so you gotta have an adjustable track bar. So you gotta put that in there to center up the rear end. And then in the front, we're gonna do the old hee hoo, and we're gonna nippy do away, you know, probably two coils to get her down to where it needs to be, so. You know how it goes. We'll get her up in the air, let's do some brake things, let Mojo make a bunch of noise back there. And I can't wait. Oh, is it done already? Perfect. All right, back in. Well, there's what we were hung up on. The uh, inner bearing didn't want to come off the spindle. So, probably gonna need some wheel seals. And looks like we're gonna have to grease the bearings. Shoes look okay. Drums are a little bit grooved up, but they'll run good enough for the girls we go with. I thought it was the uh, shoes hanging up, but nope, inner bearing. All right, let's get this part. Throw some new parts on. Wish I had some drums. Or maybe we should have just put discs on, who knows. But then where do you quit? Then you do ball joints and shocks, and tie rod ends. Open up a can of worms. We're on a budget here. Got it! Sure, land in our bucket, melt that. I think I found our culprit. Apparently that race had spun once before, so. George must have taken a punch and peened the spindle, old farmer trick, so that they don't spin. Tell you what, that son of a biscuit 
was not gonna do any spinning, that's for sure. So we'll uh, peen her up again and hopefully we can find a new bearing. Otherwise, uh, make a mental note, to replace that one once we get one. All right, hopefully we don't find any more surprises, but we know we will. This uh, passenger side rear was pretty used up. She's down to metal on metal. So of course that grooved, oh man, I used both of them up. So that grooved up our brake drum pretty good. And that's why it was such a pain to get off, but good thing we got shoes. I did order drums, so hopefully those show up next week and we can just keep delaying this video forever, but it needs them. It's gonna be all good to go for many more serviceable miles. Okay, let's uh, finish up some brakes. Small fire. Let's put it out with something flammable. Oh boy. Not going well. Oh yeah, kick it to the torch. Note to self, don't keep a bucket full of flammable fluids below where you're torching. Where were we at now? Oh yeah, trying to get this POS off. up you ready to spring into action so we got some five inch drop springs back here from oh they say western chassis on them part number 60 c10 r5 so i'm guessing that means they fit 60 to 72 uh, c10s and they are a five inch drop you know usually we cut coils in the front in the rears they got this pigtail is what i call it where it gets to a smaller diameter right there on each end 
and so you can't cut them you'd have to heat them and i am not a fan of heating coils because there's no good way to heat it evenly and plus these things are old and shot been used up you can see just how much bigger they are so what we got to do is there's a bolt in this cup up here that holds it same thing at the bottom this bottom one comes right here goes through the trailing arm we're going to heat up the trailing arm then we're going to heat up that nut and we're going to hope this half inch bolt comes out it's like what half by four and a half or half by five something like that usually these don't come up usually you end up breaking them off and then pounding it through and then trying to salvage what's left but we'll give it a little heat and see how it goes probably just wasting our time but usually those break off tops usually have a little bit better luck but there's just whatever so much surface area for these things to get rusty and then to get seized to and they just always break off in the trailing arm but we'll give her a shot always a good idea to give your dog a bone right before you want to start filming because he's not going to make any noise at all chewing on it while you're trying to film right duff that t-bone was delicious though One down, one to go. We should probably put a stand underneath here so that this rear end don't come swinging down. Good idea? I think so. Got it. You can see just how rusty that bolt is. Probably a good time to put a new bolt in, if we got one. Now we gotta do pretty much the same thing on the top of the spring, only it's got a nut up there, which you can't see, and the dirt likes to sit in there, and it's really rusty, so it's probably gonna be rounded off. And if it's not rounded off, it's gonna be rusty, and it's gonna fight us. And then you gotta get a ratchet and socket through that spring. So this one, we just might end up cutting the head off and putting a new bolt on, because it's just a standard, whatever, two inch, long half inch bolt. We'll give her a whirl, see what happens. Got it. I think we're just gonna torch the other one off because it seems like that's the way they want to go. I had a three foot gear wrench on that thing. Not much fun. There's your cup. That's a D cup, right ladies? Definitely a D cup. Just to like, give you a little uh, idea of what uh, the difference is between these guys. You can see just how much shorter that guy is and then the spring diameter is slightly smaller so we're gonna get a little bit cushier ride you know it's no longer gonna be a work truck if you ask Dwayne but he's just an angry elf he's an angry elf look at you so you see I only got one here because I got the other one in here I got some new Hardware half inch bolts, top and bottom. Put a whiz nut up top so I didn't have to hold it. That was pretty freaking handy. Uh, there's supposed to be an encapsulated nut on this uh, D cup here. And we just used a whiz nut on that. Let me show you what the, uh... so yeah, the bottom ones have that encapsulated nut. But the top ones and now the other bottom one are just like that. So we just used a whiz nut on there is what I call them, but uh, I think they're called a serrated flange nut if you want to look them up i like these because you can just hit them with the or hit the bolt with the impact and they just grab into the whatever mating component and they don't spin you don't have to put a wrench so in a blind location these work amazing no not the ray charles location just areas you can't get at with a wrench tech tip of the day all right and put the other side on and then we got to put this adjustable track bar in there of course we should paint it, but we won't. We already painted enough on this rig. I'm over huffing fumes. And what that's gonna do is you can see as this thing goes up and down, it's gonna swing in an arc. And so once we get it to ride height, we gotta measure that distance, measure how far each wheel is from some type of reference point, And then that'll tell us what length we need to set this guy at. And we'll go from there. I did, however, notice that the rear end 
has kissed the exhaust pipe, but this exhaust is not factory. Look at these goofy exhaust clamps. It's got like a hook on the U-bolt that hooks through there, and then you just tighten one side. And glass pack is not factory. Again, a bunch more of them clamps. And I think it should come out behind the rear wheel, not, well, not at an angle crappily out the back. I'm guessing whoever made this had it coming straight at one point, but we got to get an appointment with boom tube. I'm not sure if we're going to have to uh, notch it or not, but uh, we'll see. We got some ginormous bump stops we can whittle down if we need to, but cross that bridge when we get there. And we might need shorter shocks or to relocate them so that they run at a little bit better angle, but it seems like I got the same setup in my 60 short bed and I don't have a notch and I don't remember changing shocks but that was also like seven, eight years ago too, so here we go. Well, boys and girls, there is ride height. Let's hope it would be a little bit lower. Maybe uh, it'll look better when it's on the ground, right, Duff? He's uh, got the wrong angle over there. But the good news is I got three and three eighths inches on this side between the fender lip and the outside of the wheel, or tire, and then I got three and a quarter on the other side. So that means it's only got to go a sixteenth of an inch this way. I'm not even going to mess with it. Which makes sense, because look at this track bar. It's almost perfectly level right now. So as it goes up, it's going to move that way just a hair. As it goes down, it's going to move that way just a hair. So we're not even going to mess with it. So I got a track bar laying around for no reason. I was thinking I didn't put one of these on my 60. Oh, 62. But uh, I had a 60 as well. I don't think I lowered that one. Maybe I did. I probably did. And then my 71 does have an adjustable track bar on it. Maybe that one doesn't need it either. But if you're going with a five inch drop spring, you probably don't need one of these. Who knows? Let's get it on the ground and uh, figure out how many coils we got to cut on the front now. Good idea, Duff. We might only need to cut one. Two is going to give us a heck of a rake. I'm not, I'm not a big rake guy. Not a gardener. Is that what they're called, Duff? Gardeners? Horticultural expert? Well, that's plant guys, isn't it? I don't know. Landscaper, that's what it is. All right, let's get this thing on the ground. I'll take a look at her. Well, we nipped one coil out of the front. And it's not enough. Should have known better. It's always two coils that we cut out, so we lift her back up. But. You know, it's, it's hard to add the coil back in there. You know, it's like stretching a board. Them board stretchers are hard to find. Spring stretch, spring, spring, spring stretchers is hard to find. Say that like 10 times fast. So I'm gonna jack it back up and cut another coil out of there with the old gas ax. Set her back down, see how it looks, and then we'll go to the other side. Only did the driver's side, because, you know, one at a time. I did clean up that white wall, though. You gotta get these uh, rubber stripper wheeler thingers. Puddin did a video on it. Works pretty slick. That's the worst part about having white walls. Well, other than keeping them clean. All right, I'm gonna jack her up, cut in the coil, and see what happens. What do you think, Duff? You approve, huh? Two coils cut. He says, yeah, you gotta get her low in the front. I measured from side to side, and it's about four and a half inches difference. So two coils. Four and a half inches, roughly what we got. But we got another problem here. You wanna uh, wheel the uh, bone creeper over there for me? So I can go underneath and show the folks what's going on? No? You don't even need thumbs to do it, come on now. So pretty common when you do this, that's the bump stop. You can see it right there, and it's just barely touching, and then there's that whole metal bracket. But if we cut that whole metal bracket out, it'll be perfect. So. I'm gonna lift it up in the air, and I'm gonna torch that off, and I'm gonna cut two coils on the other side, torch it on the other side, bada bing, a bada boom. We'll be good to go. I know, you're, you're a lot of help. And that lower control arm was screwed up anyway. You're never gonna hit those bump stops on a stock ride height. What, I guess what I'm getting at is if somebody wanted to convert this thing back, you could just put standard coil springs back in there if you wanted to drop it the right way and put drop spindles and all that. We're not really ruining anything but Dwayne's gonna come in down well you ruined that pickup lower pickups you can't haul nothing you can't drive nowhere yada 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 it's my pickup Dwayne I'll do what I want I've done it too and then alignment and we got chins square my square my suburban my k5 blazer 
we got at least four of them running around in our fleets that align just fine, drive up in the road great. They don't bottom out, deal with it. We drive our stuff and they work just fine. Don't we, Duff? Yeah. All right, let's get the other side done. Well, dark green pickups looking pretty good here. Yeah, that's right. I look this color up. GM calls it dark green. My favorite hubcaps on there, the old 68 Chevelles. Um, three of these a subscriber sent. One of them was pretty wanged up, so I took one out of my other collection and put on there. They actually look pretty good on this pickup. I, I was torn. I thought, you know, you got to have the factory hubcaps, but these look pretty good. It freaking sits awesome in the front. I love it. The back's maybe a little bit high, but uh, we don't got a lot of options back there without changing the springs or the geometry or bagging it or whatever. I can live with it for now. We'll get some miles on it, see how she works. Ah, uh, but I wanna get this paint buffed out. That's what we're gonna do. That's the last thing we're gonna do. We're not gonna be able to go for a road test because we've been in the last four days. It's been absolutely horrendous outside. The roads were basically impassable until today. And now they're glare ice. I ran into town. It's not good. We're not taking this thing out there. I'm gonna put it in the rhubarb or wad it up. So I'm gonna run this thing. Hopefully I can make it around the back of the shop. So we can pressure wash it. I'm gonna move a little snow before we do that. Uh, Chin was here the other day and helped me get the uh, topper off it on uh, the way home from work because uh, they kicked him out of there because the roads were closed. So they said, everybody get out of here. And yeah, we're gonna buff this thing out and uh, see how she looks. But I, I, I'm digging the way the caps look. I still kind of want to get some factory C10 caps for it. I think that would be best. And you know, I don't like parting with these and these, these Chevelle caps and this thing's probably gonna be for sale. So enough yakking, I'm gonna go wash it first and then I'll show you all the stuff that I used to buff it and we'll see if we can't get this dark green to come back together. Like you guys couldn't have called it like deep forest green or avocado green or Sasquatch green, dark green, real original GM, real original Duff. All right, I'm gonna move the snow in front of the door so we can get this thing out of here and see if we can't make her around to the back side of the shop. So, ran this thing down to the wash base, spritzed her off, wiped her down with the absorber. These things are pretty awesome, I think they still make them. They were expensive when I was a kid, which was a couple of days ago. They're worth it. This one is like the original one I bought when I got my first car, so a couple days ago. She still works pretty good. Uh, we went to move some snow, let this thing drip dry for a bit. Now we're going to take our professional's full throttle restoration polish. This is the more aggressive stuff that I hope what I got. And then we got our aggressive green pad. Pads go by colors. There's black, which is finish, and orange is in between, and green is heavy. I don't probably not. Green is heavy. That's the one we always use because we never do find utility. And then I got some uh, microfiber rags here. We'll get, we'll use those to wipe the stuff off afterwards, so we don't uh, get with the buffer. And then in some of the areas we can't get with the buffer, you know the drill. So I'm gonna take this stuff, we're gonna lather it on the hood or the door or wherever, and then we're gonna kind of rub it in a little bit with the uh, DA. This DA, it's a uh, Chant Power. It's an Amazon special. The reason I picked this one is because it's got, where's it at? Oh, there it is, the switch. It's got a variable speed switch. Uh, some of these things just go way too fast for what I want to do or too slow. Anyway, this thing is adjustable, so it's cat pajamas. But anyway, I'll put a little on there on the vehicle and then rub it around with this and then go to town with it. Wipe it off with the microfiber. You know the drill. See me do it, I think I did it on the 60. And then I did it on that 66 Ford F100 and the 60 Impala, 66 F100. So where I found out about this stuff was Swenson's Early Fords on Instagram. Go follow him. He finds a lot of really cool old Ford pickups. Uh, he's into a lot of four-wheel drives like High Boys and you know, 59 and newer four-wheel drive Fords. But he does have like some, he's got like a 57 two-wheel drive. I think he's got a 56. He's got, he's got a lot of neat Fords. I think he's got a 34 Roadster, but I think his name is Chris. But Swenson Early Fords, go check him out. See what he does, but uh, he, he restores a lot. Buffs out the paint. I asked him what he used, it looks good. This was what he said. PNS is by Power and Steering. 
Paint and Supply. I don't know what it's for. PNS Sales, Hayward, Colorado. Anyway, back to work. Uh, it's flammable, apparently. It's got a two rating, reactivity zero. It's body shop safe. Who comes up with this crap? Get to work. Duff is already born. You could care less about buff and paint, couldn't you? Yeah, me too. He said, screw a little on here. Make sure you don't shake it up first or anything. Rub it around real good. I am not an expert at this, so if you ruin the paint on your vehicle, don't come back after us. If you've got nice paint, you probably shouldn't be watching this channel. Alright. Looks better already. Now just hit the switch. Might have to burn through the paint. concur pal buffing bores the crap out of me too and it makes your hands lose their feeling and such yeah she uh came out pretty good i'd say uh shiny like a hiney like that uh pudding feller down in oklahoma but you guys know how he got that terminology right same place he got his his nickname 
pudding from uh, his cellmate in a stint that he did there. So we're just going to avoid the whole shiny like a hiney and uh, how he got his nickname. But anyway, this thing cleaned up pretty good. It uh, shows a lot of its flaws. It's kind of like uh, making love to somebody the next day after you met him at the bar because, uh, yeah, you can see she's been repainted up here. That didn't come back. It kind of looks like flames, you know? I'm sure Puddin's got one of them flame tattoos somewhere because, you know, those are real cool. She's got a hooey in that fender. I didn't notice this uh, scrape right down the belt line here. Something's been spilled here. I'm guessing diesel fuel, so she's kind of stained up a bit. And then the bed's been welded up in a couple of spots. This box side is a little bit floppy. We got to fix that down there. You can see all these little minuscule dents that you couldn't before because now it's shiny, so it reflects all that stuff. The tailgate's just, I mean, it's, it's just perfectly crappy like the rest of the pickup, but uh, that tailgate is not fixable. This lip here is loose and it's been patched and there's some filler in there, yada, 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 but she uh, came out all right. Yeah, there's a few whiskey dents there. I'm digging it, Duff. And then this panel here is always faded out on these pickups because gas runs down it and they just, they don't come back to life very well. Yeah, I'm, I'm really digging it though. Um, I think we had like probably two, two and a half hours into buffing that thing out. And uh, you could spend a lot more time, you know, getting underneath the windshield and, you know, polishing the mirrors and around the grill and all that stuff. And then you could go over it one more time with like some finishing compound and then you could wax it, which the guy probably wants to do so that uh, it maintains that sheen, not the Charlie sheen. Man, that guy, he's uh, had a heck of a life. But I think that's, uh, that's gonna wrap it up for Arden here. I think that was the last guy's name. I think that's what we'll call it, Arden. For this episode, uh, you know, we might bring it back. I kind of want to clean the thing out because the glove box has a has a mouse house in there yet and uh you can smell it in the cab you know and put some wipers on it clean the interior either cover the seat or uh get a new fancy seat that's what i want you know they make these nice aftermarket seats for these pickups and i really i want one because everything i got's got a blowed out seat but I'll save that uh, for another episode. We took a perfectly good farm truck and we ruined it. We took the top off, buffed the paint, lowered it, new wheels, tires, brakes, new clutch, pulled the engine, painted the engine, new hoses, new seals, new plugs, new wires, new distributor, new thermostat. Still want to get, to, we're going to set her up with boom tube, do some exhaust. Maybe we'll uh, put a bed floor in it. I think this floor would clean up pretty good. We'll take the pressure washer or vacuum it and then pressure wash it and, and move that piece of plywood to the bottom side so it kind of is hidden better and you don't snag on stuff when you're sliding in and out. But yeah, and who knows? Maybe we'll, you know, take uh, 12 inches out there and eight inches out there and just kind of shorten that bed up a bit. I think this thing would look real good as a short bed. Or, if you don't want us to shorten it, it'd look real good in your driveway. Price and availability on Arden down below. Duff's like, I haven't even got a ride in the thing yet. That's the way it goes, pal. We can't keep them all. So thank you very much for watching. I know this video is long and drug out, but you know, a lot of other channels would do uh, one video getting it running, one putting the clutch in, one doing brakes, one lowering it, one wheels and tires. We banged her all out in one shot. We make her happen here. It uh, was a lot earlier in the season when we started this. We just kind of been picking away at it behind the scenes. So we thank you very much for watching. Hope all of you have a great holiday season. This video is going to come out. This will we'll probably have. It's it's a Saturday, the 17th. SDSU is playing Montana State today in football, and if they win. Uh, NDSU, North Dakota State, won yesterday, and those two will be facing off January 8th in Frisco, Texas. So if anybody's got any old cars in Frisco, Texas, and SDSU wins today, you know, the meth state, how crazy is that that North Dakota and South Dakota got the best two teams in FCS football playing in the national championship? But anyway, if somebody in Frisco, Texas has got a sweet ride for us to buy and haul home or drive home, hit us up, mortgagerepair at gmail.com also. Email address if you want to own Harden here. 
Uh, that being said, uh, so yes, 17th, 18th, 19th, this video will come out the 19th. This will be the last video before uh, Christmas, so hope everybody has a great holiday season. Spend the time with your family or uh, watching these videos or show the family these videos. Duff and I would appreciate that. We appreciate all of you for watching. Uh, check out the link down below for some merchandise. Uh, I know the holiday season's over, but you know you can still, better late than never, get yourself a shirt. Who's here? I don't know. Oh, we gotta get going, we gotta watch the game. Go to town, have a couple of uh, sandwiches. Speaking of that, you know, we put so much work into this thing, I, I, I'm gonna have a tough time selling this pickup, but I will. I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack a sandwich, a legit sandwich. Where are they at? Oh, there they are. What are these things? June, no, J July 19th, 2021. Year and a half old beers. <laughs> yeah, they're fine, you want one too? No, you don't drink sandwiches. <laughs> ah, still tastes delicious. Collector's edition here. And I don't know, what do you think? Should we put a get a chrome grill and a chrome bumper for this thing and put a chrome bumper on the rear? I don't know. Let's get the interior done first and then we'll see. Maybe maybe pound a little bit of dentage out on that fender and <laughs> tie that box side up. I don't really want to fix the cab corner rust and the fender rust because that's a lot of work and then we're matching paint. I think Arden's just perfectly crappy the way it is, and Duff concurs. So, on that note, Duff and I are gonna go run around out in the snow for a bit. Kick Arden outside and figure out what we're gonna work on next. So, thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Buffing paint isn't fun. Well, not for you, because you don't have any thumbs. And you just get to watch me do it, and it's loud and noisy. <laughs> On to the next one. Go for a ride? Let's do it.